This right here is the P40 Warhawk from FMS. This is the 1400 millimeter version. Now, if you don't know what 1400 millimeter version is, that happens to be 55 inches for you and I over here in America. And uh, P40 is, is truly a good war bird. It helped out in, in a lot of the uh, conflicts that, uh, that America ever had. And uh, this P40 has been modified from its original version and is now in my version, which is something I can see. And also in this uh, snow here, uh, the enemy cannot see me very well on the ground. All i got to do is cover that bare tail right here. And um, they cannot see me. And so uh, I'll, give, I'll walk you through some of the modifications that I have done on this P40. As you can see, it's a paint job. was on. And uh, as we walk up over here, I also uh, put carbon fiber reinforcements. Um, I put three of them. One at the leading edge, one in the middle, and one here at the trailing edge. And this allows that uh, wing flex uh, to, to dissipate. Now when you first get your P40, you're going to find out that it's going to oscillate. It's just going to go up and down. And as you're going to go into some unusual pitch attitudes, and uh, under the sea uh, pitch attitudes it's because of the wing flex and if you put reinforcement in there you will not get that wing flex and once you get your CG right this is one fine aircraft it's manufactured to be a fine aircraft once you modify it now, I'm gonna do something I normally do not do now let me climb up here a minute bear with me I'm now on top of this aircraft, and uh, this aircraft is solid. I'd never ever walk across a uh, aircraft that was not reinforced by carbon uh, fiber. There's no way, and that's one of the things that uh, I've done to this aircraft. That's why it's survived for so long. There's a lot of hours on here, lots of hours. That's because it's a fine aircraft. Now let me jump down here. <laughs> Another modification that I've done is over here on the uh, air exit hole, I drilled some holes in there. It goes all the way up inside here and allows some of that air to come out. So there's airflow over this motor. And this motor is a 650 kV motor and it can pull this plane like nobody's business. And it is tough. So I also opened up all these chambers in here. Now they want you to put in their original batteries and that's fine and dandy but I've got all different types of batteries from all different types of companies and some of them just did not fit in this aircraft so I opened up the top hatch I opened up this middle one and then there's an angle piece that goes across here I alleviated all that it's gone now and this allows the air to come in from there all the way across exit down here also go across my components and come out their hind end I suggest you do the same thing. If you don't, you're going to blow the face right off this aircraft and it will look silly. Not only that, it gets quite expensive. Another thing that I have done on this aircraft was I put spray foam all inside up in here. I took this cowling off, I sprayed some of the spray foam in there as it leaked out. I would just uh, start cutting that out and I packed it in there and now the rigidity helps out from the weakness of here but the rigidity is all there and I suggest you do the same thing it will hold that 650 kV motor no problem it bolts right in got from nitro planes and it makes this even faster I can go up against some of the, the top-notch aircraft out there that's been manufactured at a later year because this is the original P40 from the beginning and the P40s just kept getting better and better and better when they made them at FMS Anyways, this is a prop right here. Careful that you don't put your plastic finger in the prop. It will take it off, as you already know. But anyways, I'm going to take you to the other side of the aircraft, and I'm going to show you the other side. 
yeah, no, that's kind of dirty up there. We get the crew to come on out there and clean that up. But we have so much fun with this aircraft that we just keep flying and keep flying and keep flying. And we don't clean it up that like we should. But we do do our maintenance programs. Now, this wheel, I know what you're thinking. That's not an original wheel. I know that. We took that off and I originally had a Dave Brown wheel on there, three inch, and it's very light and it's also spongy. But I took it off another aircraft. I took it off to for another aircraft. And now I have this one on here. This is also a good wheel. Let's go back over here to the rear wheel and I'll show you what the modification I did over there at that rear wheel. One thing that you might want to do to your wheel, I recommend it highly. And that is put a little bit of solder right there. Just solder that little tip right there. This thing won't swing around inside that bracket if that happens. You can still take the wheel off. And not only that, if it bends, it only bends at that solder part. It will not mar, mam, damage, or put a mark underneath the body. I don't like that when you come in for a landing and that's weak. And that comes down and, and, and barrels in there. That will also work on the P47. It will also work on the P51 on the first two versions of it. The other version where they still put the retract in there, why well, you ain't got to worry about that. This antenna mass up here, that was installed by G.I. Joe himself. Another thing, this paint job, it was done by Captain America. By the way, I did put a air exhaust port down here underneath the aircraft, right up under here. And that allows the rest of that air to come across my components from up there and come on out through here. I don't like it when the when the airplane's face blows off. That's not that's not cool. Let me get back up on here just a minute. Well, inside here there is a sticker that FMS puts in there of the dashboard. And that has proven time and time and again to be an effective, useful tool. The green light stays green, the red light stays red. It is very predictable, and I've had no problems with that sticker ever, ever changing. Another thing I did was I took uh, the components out of Wonder Woman's invisible jet. Can't see it in there because it's invisible, but it's in there, working great. The one thing I didn't like is Spider-Man came up here and he put this gooey stuff here. I don't know what orifice that gooey stuff came out. Spider-Man is not allowed to come near my aircraft ever, ever again. We're just going to open this up here and we're going to climb inside and we're going to go for a ride and I'm going to show you the flight characteristics of this P-40. Belvo Tower P-40 is ready for takeoff. P-40 is departing on runway 36. Belvo Tower P-40 is going to stay in the pattern, do some pattern work. Roger that, Belleville Tower. We're gonna keep an eye out for that Piper Scout. One thing you wanna keep in mind, especially you beginners, is the longer the nose of the aircraft, the more left-hand tendency there's gonna be. Now, if you watch those two guys on RC Air Training Command, you understand why your plane goes left. I, I suggest you go look at that video. Now, if you're a beginner, I recommend that if you're getting into warbirds, you want a stubby nose, not a long one like uh, Mr. Schmidt or this P-40 or even a P-51 because it's just going to be a little more touchy. You want a stubby nose like a Hellcat or maybe Trojan or even a Corsair, something that has 
a little smaller rotary engine, not an inline engine. Another little Piper Cub in the in the pattern, so we gotta look out for him. As we're just buzzing by, the 650 kV motor is quick. If you notice, I'm running out of airspace in this little uh, area, trying to stay in the pattern. And we're gonna now shoot the limbo. Here we go, go under the wire. Check that out. We're gonna look up, and there's the wire. And we're bugging out. We're pulling up. how consistent my dashboard is look at that all those components look at that they're just lined up all nice and right all right let's 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 do some uh wheezy on the old tummy watch this it's gonna pull back a little bit with a little bit of side Woo -wee. now my little plastic face can, can barely hold on to this it stretches to the side as well as my plastic tummy this is a stable stable aircraft I'm running a 3000 milliamp sky lipo battery as a 20c it's kind of low but they say has no problem i found that this uh, motor is way more efficient than the uh 4250 i'm gonna go right under here let's let's go back right buzz this field under the limbo pull up Woo <laughs> this is a wonderful aircraft looks good in the air profile great it is nice now i can get about eight minutes off this battery but I decide to only go about six six and a half minutes that gives me a good woo -wee, there goes my stomach again it gives me a good uh, minute or so for recovery in case something comes on the runway or uh, or something comes up wrong I got ways to recover You want to be mindful that when you got a long nose aircraft, um, pretty, where it's pretty much on any wall bird, that you want to apply a little bit of elevator as well as rudder and the aileron all at the same time to keep that nose going across the horizon. Otherwise, uh, it will slip and you'll dive and all kinds of things. It's a very nice aircraft, very stable, but the P40 can get away from you pretty easy. I'm going to take a look over this wing right here. Woo <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Belleville Approach P40 is over the top and coming in for landing on runway 1A. Roger that Belleville P40 is clear to land. Now on the P-40, um, this is going to come in a lot faster than normal Warbirds because it's very slippery and this one's pretty heavy. So if you watch this speed, it's coming in pretty quick. Just keep all that air up over the surfaces. And here we go. It's a constant descent rate. It's just a little faster, that's all. Now I'm going to start to apply pressure. Pull back, pull back, pull back. And there it is. We got a touchdown rolling really nice like. Very smooth. Very smooth. Belleville, ground, P-40 is with you. We're back taxiing on runway 36. One thing I want to make mention uh, strongly is when you're coming in for your landing and you finally touch down, you want back pressure. You want all the elevator you can get to keep that that tail planted even during taxi and that's what I'm doing right now I got this uh, stick pulled all the way back even during taxi right the moment that plane touched that pins it down so you don't get that bounce and come right back up 
But anyways, we're taxiing off into position. This is Landon Gear. I hope you enjoyed this flight review of the P-40. I can't stress how good this aircraft is. Bye, y'all. Roger that, Belleville. P-40 is clear to land on runway 18. So I'm powering down a little bit and I'm putting down landing gear. As soon as I slow down a little more, I'm going to put on some flap. So now I'm engaged in flap. Right now I'm only going half flap. I'll go left a little bit. Now, I got a nice descent rate. It's nice and slow. Notice how hardly anything is moving. And I'm just floating on down. I'm just correcting everything with rudder. And pulling back on stick, pulling back, there's the stall, and there's the touchdown, just like that. Now I'm keeping that back pressure on the stick as I, as I taxi along. And that's all there is to it. It's a really good aircraft. <laughs>